Welcome back to episode 86 of NPK Live. Today, you are with, as always, myself, Stephen. And myself, Thomas. And we are talking about methods to improve plant health, plant quality, and ultimately your yields as well. So, we've got a little... What I wanted to say first of all is that you can use as much technology as you want to improve plant health, quality and yields. You could use you could use 50 different nutrients. You could use all the technology. You could spend thousands of pounds. But if you, as a grower, aren't giving it the time, care and attention that your plants need, it doesn't matter. You could spend as much as you want. It just really won't matter. So firstly, nothing comes before being a good cultivator. No. Mastering the basics of feeding, uh, mastering your environment, getting that dialed in, and harvesting correctly as well, because that's also a massive part of uh, getting the best out of your plants with regards to health, quality, and yield. The halftime discussion is on Proposition or Prop 64, also called UMA, A U M A, which is the Adult Use of Marijuana Act. And this is specific for. In the US. In the US, and specifically California. Yeah. Something We've, very interesting that's going on, isn't it? Yeah, that we're gonna we're gonna have a little up chat on. about yeah. because there's a lot of there's a bit a lot of debate on it. So we're gonna dive in, give our thoughts and opinions, and see if you agree or disagree. Yeah, we have a lot of subscribers in California, so make sure that you message us with what 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 you think how it went. So health of a plant. Yeah. I've written some bits now. I know you've you've just got all your information. Just in I your just head. like to just dive, just like in, to dive and in and be the be the spanner in the wake. Stephen's got a very articulate Fonical. looking yes um, set of. CDs. of I, board, I'm just really reading through what Steve's waffling <laughs> writing down here, thinking what he done. I know. I just know. I do go over the top. Like somebody help me here. Right, plant health. So doing my little bit of research. I noticed that increasing the sugar plant, sugar plant, the sugar plant, that okay. is a nice plant to, to yeah. grow. But what we're talking about is increasing the sugar content of okay. your plant, and that is a guaranteed way to improve health. But also the quality and the yield will also improve. So increasing the sugar content, which we'll call bricks, and that's the proper word for sugar in the plant, is increases resistance to pest and disease. Because and I'm going to read this because it's I, I found this out myself yesterday actually. It is believed that the sugar refracts the light slightly so that the pests don't identify it as a food source. So what that means is... Yeah, got, please, please tell me what that means because I'm light. starting to sweat here and I would think he was right about this coat or, or, or I'm in the deep end here. I mean, what, what are you talking about here? So light, light hits a plant and obviously we all know that it absorbs... The solar spectra, panels, yeah. which are the leaves, yeah. And reflects mostly green. That's why plants appear green. Now, in the spectrum, there's a specific bandwidth called infrared and ultraviolet. And insects look at the ultraviolet part of the spectrum and can see very, very narrow bandwidths. Now, in a plant that is low in nutritional quality and low in bricks, sugar content, the sugar, there's there's less sugar, so it refracts less, meaning that it comes off in a different direction to, to the insect's eyes, moves slightly on the infrared scale. So the plant, the insect identifies it as food. It identifies it as a weak plant. Now, when you increase sugar content, you increase the nutritional quality. The sugar content means that the light hitting the plant refracts slightly differently, and the insect sees it but doesn't identify it as food. Refract or reflect? Not reflect. So reflect is a reflection like off a mirror. Yeah. Refraction is where you will split the wavelength slightly. So it refracts. Like the best way to describe it is light through a prism. You know, when you shine light, and through you a see prism, the different colours or a rainbow. <laughs> that yeah, refraction. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the light sunlight. goes through the water, through the pentagon. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, it gives exactly. you. Yeah, it spreads, separates yeah. the colours. Okay, yeah, so that's refraction. Okay, reflection is what you would see. In so this is it. This is sort of like an in-depth explanation of how the plant can become weak. Not weak. So more susceptible yeah things. more susceptible but mm. you can also narrow that susceptibility down mm. by increasing yeah. more sugars within the plant yeah. so basically what you're saying is to make your plant a hardy ass little get is to increase the sugar in the plant exactly. how do we do that then what are we doing we're doing what are we doing getting a load of go down a, a potato and lyle get down the asda now big bag of potato and lyle you know blue and white ones two pounds sugar 90p yeah. and we just get that Bang it all Throw in the 10 litre water, boom, away we go. No. No. Why not? There's some people that use blackstrap molasses. Um, stay away from it. Boom. So, some people do use blackstrap molasses. 
Thomas disagrees with it. I never used it myself. I tend to stay away from it because it's not a plant specific product. I believe it messes with the plant too much. Yes. Yeah. Uh, metabolism. T- metabolism, chemical, chemical compound, and everything that's going on internally with the plant. You start banging all that stuff in, and, and it, it, it's just, I it don't like it. possible yeah. more problems than yeah, it yeah. solves. Um, if you have experimented with it, let us know and tell us how you got on. I know loads of people like it. I mm-hmm. know loads of people are big fans of it and use it on, on, on a continual basis and all swear by it. But it's not it's not for me and I'm not interested in it. Mm. But they do use it and that is one Each way. Each to their own. Don't, of... don't, let me, don't let me tell you what to do on that product, you know what I mean? I'm not mm. saying, you know, don't ever use it. But Maybe I try it out on one or two If plants. you want, have a go. But, you know, I, I love my plants, so that's why I don't use it. Well... If you also love your plants and you don't want to do too much experimentation, then you're going to use a typical sugar booster. So examples would be Canna Boost is probably the best example because it's it's the most widely known. That's essentially what Canna have done. They've taken a big sugar molecule, something like blackstrap molasses, and refined it mm. and made it more available uh, to the plant. Mm. And essentially... A, can of boost as well as other sugar boost products will increase the metabolism and increase the bricks content within your plants mm. so that it's less susceptible to disease um it's just an all-around healthier plant yeah what i will say you know what i'm like i actually to measure bricks within a plant you would use a refractometer which is a little piece so of bricks kit. is sugar yeah okay you would get a bit of a leaf, squeeze the leaf juice into your refractometer, which you can get for pretty cheap. Refractometers? Yeah. We, you're buying me one. Oh, that's, well. that's on my little kit list, to be honest. Um, get that nice this big fat wallet out. Another, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Hold it up to the light, and it will show you percentage of sugar within your plant. You can just come to the shop and ask us, ask Steve, once he maybe buy this rubbish and... Um, the yeah. higher the percentage of bricks within the plant, the better, to be honest. You want, from the research that I've done over the last few days, they say that anything above 15% is really good and you're going to have less susceptibility to pest and disease when your bricks content is high. Another product that you may not necessarily think of as a sugar booster is beneficial bacteria. And I had a chat with my good friend Phil and Tony about a product called Bactivator from Hydratops. And what Bactivator claims to do, and does do in my experience, is alters the colour of the chlorophyll. So that spider mites don't identify it as food. So you still might land on the plant, mm-hmm. but they think, oh no, there's nothing here for me. And they bugger off. So it deceives, don't replicate. Them. Yeah. It deceives them, it plays a little game with them, with the brains, doesn't mm-hmm. it? And I never really understood, and that's strange for me, because I normally I'd go, I don't understand that, I'd go and research it straight away. But it worked, and it it just worked and that yeah. was it really for me and then I stumbled across this research so I rang them up just to confirm and my thoughts were correct the bacteria in Bactivator and also top heavy crop increases the uptake of sugars increases the uptake of all nutrients so when the plant is increasing in its sugars the light refracting off the chlorophyll changes slightly spider mites don't identify it as food and therefore no more spider mite pests and prevention is always better than cure so get down to the local hydro shop MPK Technology, Liverpool or Morton. Uh, we've got two stores. We've got the Superstore <laughs> in Morton, uh, that's on the Whittle, and we've also got the store in Liverpool. If you don't live in them areas, we'll mail it out to you. If if you still can't, don't, are not feeling us, well, you know, stop watching the podcast. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's coming to For all this free information. Yeah. And then going out. Nah, I'm only joking. Just make sure he's getting the good gear from wherever you are. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we do say on plenty of podcasts how to identify that you're in a good grow shop. Yeah. And there's plenty around the country. We're actually going to probably get some on in the future, aren't we? Yeah. To have a chat with them. Yeah. Because different grow shops up and down the country do things differently. Yeah. We, we, we try and give you the best information, but sometimes it's good to get a wide... But there is, there is some very good shop. London, big shout out to Slim, Arnslow. But, and a big shout out to Hydro to Grow. Also boys and Manny well. to Colin. Big shout out to you. What's happening, boys? So if you're in those shops, the good shops do tend to have Hydro Tops. Make sure you get yourself some Bactivator, some Top Heavy Crop. And while you're there, you may as well get some Triple F as well. Because yeah. those three work fantastically together. And it's going to give you a healthier plant as well. What you'll notice here as well is, I'm letting Steve waffle on a bar, is products yeah um because he's talking about his his sciencey way he does stuff and how he is there makes... any other way 
Well, I've got my way, haven't I? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So you're gonna don't think I'm just sitting here stuck. I've got some healthy tips, but mine's are just basics. Healthy um, tips. Help. Well, yeah. <laughs> Get them out. My tips are a little bit different from Stephen's. Stephen's giving you the scientific method. Yes. Yes. Anyway, I will give you some simple little tips to make your plants' healthiness remain strong. Mm. Yeah. Through your many, many years of cultivation. Yes. Of all types of herbs, fruits yeah. and vegetables. Yes, that is it. That is correct. Do you want to go next or do you want me to talk about silicon? Go on, you go for so silicon. I'm going, to, I'm going to back to this sceptic out to you, you know. Go on. So, next method is the use of silicon. Yeah. So, silicon, as you know, if you're a regular listener to the podcast, is my absolute favourite mm. element. Mm. And it is not technically one of the 17 essential elements that you would need to grow plants because without it you don't you wouldn't see a deficiency you wouldn't see a silicon deficiency but when you do start to use it from having not never used it before you will never ever go back to not i always it. think of silicon because you know what i'm like please waffle on about all this meaning in there and i just need to understand it in my way i think of silicon as like a shield is that right correct Okay. Boom. <laughs> Sorry, go on. That... <laughs> Carry on. Carry on, please do. Thank you very much for that input. Um, you do simplify it, which I like. I find I struggle to simplify things sometimes. So silicon is essential, in my opinion, for increased plant health. It increases resistance to all pests, all disease, severe heat, severe cold, and also increases the chlorophyll content in the leaf. So chlorophyll is what makes your leaf green the colour green and is the minute little solar panels within the big leaf solar yep. panel so increasing more chlorophyll means the more ability to capture light means what we'll talk about in a little bit later on bigger yields yeah and that's basically that's silicon yeah so you've got two main types potassium silicate and ortho silicic acid if you're on a budget yeah potassium silicate's a little bit cheaper but I know you love this ortho silicic acid because it's more readily available for the plant okay so you have to spend a bit more money my personal favorite is butter's tree solar green power but there's plenty of others there's aptus regulator on there as well yeah that's a um, very very good product that's... dna mills have just brought out a silicon i think it not just brought out it's been out for a while but dna mills the cocoa we are smashing it it is a great cocoa off topic slightly get it in your shop and get it in your room cocoa it is phenomenal. cocoa with cork yeah strange product but very Everyone's good. coming back saying mm. brilliant. Yeah, so a little good, shout good. out to that. Yeah. But they, they have their silicon, which is also an ortho salicylic acid. And you have Gen 200 as well, which is an ortho salicylic acid. So if you've got money to spend, get them orthos. If you just want to test, dip your toe in the metaphorical silicon pond, try potassium silicate. They both work really well. Or if you're pepped and you're skint, remember what we taught you years ago on the first podcast. Go to the park, Chevy Park, Crocky Park. If you're in New York, Central Park. If you're in Canada, the mountains. Any of the hundred million parks they have in Yeah, there. go and get a big bin bag, rubber gloves, thick rubber gloves, otherwise you'll be in pain. Probably want to go up your arm and run round grabbing all of the nettles, yeah, and put them in the bin bag. Then get home, strip all of the stuff off the stalks and then put them in a bucket with some water. Yeah. Ten litres of water. Ten litres of water. Put it in the dark. In the put dark. The lid over it. Two weeks. Done. And Go then, back. And then what you want to do is you want to lift the lid off because the smell is uh, impeccable. Gorgeous. <laughs> Have a really Tasting. big sniff in. It's sniff the in. best smell. Like, I don't know why people don't use it as perfume. Yeah. And, and, and basically, you want to sieve the juice. <laughs> yeah. They were really interesting noises. You're going to sieve that juice and that is your natural free silicon and it's the do it that. is the bomb. Thank you for reminding me of that. But I would have forgot about that's that. That's a good one. Man. It is a very good one. And organic as well. Yeah, and free Can. of charge. So, have you got anything? What would you... Because they were right. my few little my on top, health. My uh, top thing that no one ever thinks of. I like to... Party. To, yeah. <laughs> I like to look after me plants as well. And I like to foliar feed me plants. Yeah. Mm. I like to give them just normal water. Mm. In the dark. As a foliar feed. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I just, and I do that continuously, and the plants love it. Because what you've got to remember is when you when you grow indoors also, 
is that you're trying to replicate the outdoors. Yeah. And what everyone forgets is that it rains. Yet we're feeding the plants with water and nutrition. But the leaves always feel moisture yeah. and water vapour. Yeah, yeah. And that, humidity. Yeah, that plays a key part to the healthiness of the leaf of the plant and the internal structure of the mm, leaf. Mm. And it also helps develop the plant. And you've got to remember these leaves... Uh, Obviously, you need the whole plant to make it all work. It's 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 a perfect equilibrium. You know, I love it that way. He's coming up with the big words this week. Yeah. Eh? So, but what I'm trying to say is, the solar panels are pro- at the first point of contact mm. from where the energy source becomes taken in. Mm. So these solar panels are vital. Your leaves are vital. They're the key source to everything. So you need to look after them and. Mm. Play with them and have a little look after them. Sing Just them. be nice to them and nature them. And, and I love to give a foliar feed. And you know where I got that from? I got that from you guys in the US and in Canada. Yeah, because you guys showed me about foliar feeding. Because, like, hey, man, you know foliar feed? I'm like, nah. I'm like, what? You dumbass? Are you crazy? I'm like, really? It's that important? And they're like... I got sat down, I got educated, I got schooled. Doesn't If you haven't got a sprayer and you're that skint, get in the, the yard cupboard, find something that's got a squirty on, psh, lash it out, bit of water, get in there every night when, when the lights have gone off. Make sure you don't do this stuff when the lights are coming on because obviously light onto water, onto leaf, equals heat, burn, badness for the leaf. Foley feeding, very important. And yours was just with water, increasing the humidity. Yeah, mm. so and then if you want to take that a step further, mm. you'd um, you'd use actual foley feeds. Yeah, that a lot of companies do foley feed and the increase of increasing the plant's health. Is yeah. there anything else that you do to increase the plant's general well being and health? Yeah, I continuously monitor the room with little sticky traps. You know, I love sticky traps. Sticky traps are oh, great, and they help. Well, they they were in the toolkit last. Yeah, they were in the, ago, yeah, they were in the toolkit, and mm. like we sell like a pack of. 10 and you only need to really use a couple if you've got a good healthy room anyway and your plants are looking good you just apply them around the base of the plant so if anything does think oh i'm going to pop along you can see that straight away so then you will have an earlier indication if the plant could be getting attacked or there might be things around about this so you can make instant assessments on what needs to be done regarding that mm. But some some of them come with little squares on, don't they? Yeah. And if and if you have like one so many, yeah, square, yeah, not yeah too it tells you how things are developing, but it also tells you what's there. So different pests do different attack different parts of the plant's body, i.e. the root system, the leaf system, the flowers. Maybe if the flowers are developed, the uh, structure on the the, the stems, mm. bacteria and stuff like that. So all of this being able to see what what's going on makes you have a healthy plant yeah, yeah. because you constantly I'll always harp on about this I'll always say that as you said before prevention is better than cure so a healthy plant to me is monitoring it you're going to look at your plant and pay attention to it this is something some people might be watching this and thinking oh my god how can he sit there and say to us yeah you need to watch your, your plants I, you know my plants are fine and that but are they really fine are they really are your plants absolutely amazing or do you just have a plant because you think you know everything you know because i don't do you no nope. <laughs> i am we're just a little tadpole in a big sea here just laying and constantly so if you if you've been growing your five years and whatnot and whatnot and you know everything unfortunately there's you don't and you, you there's a, there's the a great... best thing you can do is, is is turn around and look at your plants because as we said in plant whisperer that's the key to a healthy plant to me. And it's a simple piece of advice. It's not something you need to go and buy. It's study your plant and look at it and look for its signs of what it needs and when it needs it throughout its different various stages of life. Yeah. There's a, there's a great graph and it's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. I think I've mentioned it before. Yeah. And I doubt there's many people listening to this podcast or watching live that are on the first peak because the Dunning-Kruger effect is too hills they look like two, two yeah. mountain peaks yeah and you start off on your journey your career as a cultivator and grower and you go very quickly up to the first <coughs> pinnacle very quickly top. maybe with even in three months you do a bit of reading a bit of youtubing maybe you even watch this show 
and you get to that first pink and you if you watched this show they would have got there in six months yeah go on anyway <laughs> you believe that you know it all you think that there's nothing left to learn mm. you can't be taught anything new mm. and you are very very good at what you do and it happens to everybody it's happened to me every time that you learn me included new. yeah and then one thing will happen and you'll go actually I didn't know that and you do a bit of research into that one thing that you didn't know and there begins the slow decline into the trough in between those two mountain peaks. And you spend a lot of time in that trough, don't you? Yeah. A lot of time. Things I mean, the going decline wrong, errors, very quickly. death, plants die and root problems. And Oh, but everything was great. I was the master. No, mm. you took you, you, you didn't realise, you didn't understand. The master and the plants and understanding the plant takes a long, long time and many, many years. And there's actually, thank you for reminding me, Eric, there's a, an article by Theo from Gavita on the Dun and Kruger effect about two or three issues ago in the in the garden culture. So it explains... Well, I'm not going to say too much about it then because if Theo watches this and I've said anything wrong, he will rip the backside out of me. <laughs> but the, the decline is very quick and the that struggle up that second peak is a lifelong struggle. For life. So you're learning for life, basically. And that's there's what probably, we're trying to say. Um, Four or five people in the world that are actually at the peak, at the second peak. Hopefully, in 30, 40 years, we may actually get there. But we'll crack on up this mountain of knowledge and continue to learn. So, Dunning-Kruger effect. You never know at all. And if you do, you're on the quick decline. So, another tip from me is observation. Any more? Or would you like to move you on to carry, yield? Yeah, I've, I've, to... I've, 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 I didn't want to put too many points. No, because you, each I'm going to, when you go to yield, I've got some other things I want okay. to say. Okay, so, yield... Yield is a big one. Obviously, what everybody wants to do is increase the yield. And the first and foremost method of increasing yields is to increase increase the amount of light that the plants receive. More light is more food and bigger yields. And what I want to say is that light is food, not nutrients. Think of nutrients like the condiments. So your A, B, your boosts and your PKs and your growth enhancers and all this, your root stimulators. They're your condiments. That's your gravy, your mustard your mint sauce, all them lovely things that add a little bit something oh, extra to your deal. To your deal? To your Barbecue dinner. sauce. Barbecue sauce. So, but your, your roast dinner is the light that you give your plant. So more light, more energy for the plant to complete all of its processes for vegetative growth and, and flowering growth. And with more light comes more heat as well. So make sure that you're on point. You've got your room dialed in to environment. extract all of that heat. Environment. Environment. Just keep saying it. It's environment. It could go on for half an yeah. hour. Environment. <laughs> What's that? That's, you know, all the airflow and uh, how the plants breathe and everything to do with that and getting rid of all the additional heat. That's called environment. And it's one of the most key things. So pay attention. So increase your yields, use more light, but get your environment dialed in so that that extra light doesn't give too much heat and ends up killing your plants. So more light is more yield. Now, linked directly to light is carbon dioxide. And when people say that carbon dioxide increases your yields, mm. it doesn't. Not by itself. You couldn't just put some CO2 in there with no light. You would do nothing for your plants. It works with the light to create more carbohydrates. And if you go home and you Google the chemical equation for photosynthesis, you'll see that CO2 is the very first point within that chemical equation. CO2 with H2O, water, and light gives you carbohydrates and your oxygen so co2 and your light is the is the main two points for increasing yield yeah and then utilizing this extra energy for increasing yields is the second most important is the third most important part i've written oh yeah it's, it's a good job i'm making well notes. i'm gonna just jump in before you do I've, I've also need to say that co2 most growers will take the temperature up a couple of degrees to allow sufficient carbon dioxide exchange so if you do use co2 uh, do a little bit of research on ideal temperatures because it's a little bit higher than you might expect because i've seen on your notes you've got some of my bits in there oh, right. yeah mm. so you're talking about the yield and improving the healthiness of the plant for its yield one of the most important things as well is making sure the plant can support its yield so it may be all very well growing a really nice fruit but then if the plant structure you grow this fruit that well that it overpowers the plant structure it's fine the plant however you don't adhere to what needs to be done next i.e string the plant up use a net or whatever method in which way the plant's grown however uh, and then 
this becomes that heavy. The plant can't support its fruits anymore. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a million times plants lying on the floor, the leaves upside down, they they snapped. These st- that's the main problem, isn't it? it yeah, heavy top weight snap your stem. Yeah, and then it just opens up for pest and disease. Then it also coincides with one of your products as well that you was talking about, which is silicon. Mm. We I shortened it down to the shield, but yeah. not only that, it's a consecutive shield yes so it basically m- makes the plant strong enough to hold mm-hmm. an extra additional amount of weight that much so i.e. if you what I know um, you grow a plant without silicon you will end up having but you grow very well and you will end up having to put bamboos or stings or sting it up or whatever at the end because the fruits will become that heavy the plant can't support mm-hmm. itself you grow the plant another plant the same plant with silicon what you'll find is that the plants will become a lot more stronger and won't need um, as much support. Yeah. Okay. And that's what you'll find. But so silicon, in a way, is also responsible for perhaps increasing yes, yields. Yes. Yes, it coincides hand in hand with both mm. of them. So that's why I just wanted to jump in and get there before you robbed my little bit mm-hmm. on your because I've seen on your your your, your, your script. Thing. Yeah. Go on. So now this is if you listen to anything in this podcast. I'm actually going to write this up into a little blog because I knew it, but hadn't really thought about it too much until recently. And the, to get to the point, the next method is scrogging. So scrogging the plant is stands for screen of green. Where you stretch your plant out through a scrog net or some so wire. you're basically building a canopy. Mm. A horizontal canopy. You don't grow yeah. plants vertically, you grow them horizontally. And Like if you go in a jungle and you look up, You'll just you can't see the light because there's just a canopy of yeah, tree. Yeah, yeah. And what this does, it's not necessarily the the bending that increases your yields, but it's the plant's ability to capture every single piece of light, every single photon that you're giving it into turn it into carbohydrates. So we grow. I want to give you an idea here. We grow lots of vertical plants. Yeah, yeah. And what happens with the light that you're giving it is that a lot of light hits the floor. A lot, a lot of light hits the walls. And that light that hits the walls, I like to say to my customers, it's like throwing, I don't know, 50 pences at the floor. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Because it's lost light. I mean, you're, you're paying for that light. You want every single piece of the light, every single photon to hit that leaf. Why not Why not do it? Even if you don't scrog through nets, what I want, you, what I want people to start doing is bending your plant outwards, manipulating the plant, low-stress training, LST we talked about before, on advanced growing techniques. Um, your goal is to make the floor of your grow room in dark. I want it in shade. So that means that every single piece of light that you're giving it, it means your room's more efficient and it means you're going to increase your yields. So you're utilising all of the energy. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll notice, you probably start thinking about this now, you'll notice that on the on the grows where you've got a couple of plants and there's a lot of space on the floor and you're illuminating the floor, you're illuminating, illuminating the walls, you probably didn't do so well with the ones where you've got enough room for them to grow, but you're putting the leaves out and the leaves have man- have managed to capture all of that light you gave them. They probably did pretty well. Yeah, well, that, that was an, use that's another one of my tips as well. Would yield people get confused and think that yield comes under a mount of plant mm. when it's not, it's, uh, it's about... The quality of the grower cultivator. Yeah, it's and if the grower cultivator thinks a hundred plants in a space where there should only be maybe five plants because each plant needs its own area to grow. Mm-hmm. So you've gone to the opposite there, haven't you? I've said move the plants in the opposite in a good way. Yeah, move your plant. Have enough plants so that every single piece of leaf is capturing that light, but don't go overboard so that. The plants are that close together, the leaves are overlapping, mm. and then the leaves are still in darkness mm. because it's pointless. It's going to use a waste of light, and it's it's not efficient. Yeah. The key word for today's podcast is efficiency. You want to be as efficient as yeah. possible with your lighting. And the last point that I want to make on that is that when we grow plants horizontally, become more efficient. The, the, the good part as well is that the light, which also is, is heat, it's not going to burn your plants. So with horizontal, with vertical plants, you have an area at the top which receives too much light. Mm. You have the middle, sweet section, and you have the bottom, which is your scraggly, yeah. horrible growth. Yeah. The, the tomatoes don't quite ripen up, or they, they're just small and, and popcorny. They don't look too so great. So if you just lie it down, 
the whole plant. Yeah. We like them sound effects, don't we? Gary loves them sound effects. All little soldiers standing to attention. We love it, don't we? <laughs> and then just the last part of that, as well as getting enough plant material, vegetative growth to capture the light that you give it, reflective material. So if you're if you're in a in a tent, the light comes down, hits the sides of the walls, and it's hitting the plant off its second reflection. And you scrub the plant out, the bottom's dark. Everything's really nice. A tent is really good for efficient lighting. If you're in a room, it tends to become a little bit less efficient because you lose a lot of light to the walls and then it bounces off and hit the floors. So what you could try to do is make that reflective material, bring it in closer to your plants so that there's less chance of, of light escaping and making your room less efficient. Do you want to talk about root growth? The, that, that was my last point. But I've harped on a little bit about scrog in there. And I want you to... T- <laughs> I want to give me voice a rest. Yeah. So a healthy root system. Healthy root system. Top tip. Stop flooding them. Stop overwatering them. Um, when you see your plants going yellow, stop watering them. People come in the shop all the time. They've got these things skating across the top of the water because your root system's living in a pond. They don't like that. You need to assess, look and evaluate your plants. Give your plants a dry period and uh, keep the root system nice and healthy. You can use some additional products, uh, some root stimulators and whatever, but no product will help your root system. Nothing will help your root system if you continuously overwater it. So if you've got a sodden root system that's stinking, <coughs> yeah, horrible, and you think, oh, yeah, it's okay, we'll go to the shop and I'll buy this this stuff to make it better, which we do have, but then you go back and you put the stuff in the water and you water it again. again. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. That does not work. So you need to listen and pay attention to your plant. Yeah, listen to your plant because it talks to you. Yeah, yeah, visually. And stop putting so much water into the either base of the tray or over the top or over the top and the base. Or in flood and drain systems, flooding yeah, too often. Yeah, so you need to, that, that's a top tip for me. It's something you don't need to buy, it's mm. something you just need to do. And when, because when you're over water, you're essentially pushing all of the oxygen out of the plant, it's displacing oxygen. Mm. So with DWC, you, can't, you don't overwater because there's always plenty of oxygen there. So make, that's, that was my uh, last point for healthy roots. The ways of checking your root system. What? Checking your root system? What are you talking about? It's yeah. in a pot, though. How do you check your root so system? So you're going to get your fingers and you're going to slide it so the stalk's there. Yeah. I'm getting excited now. Yeah, there's the stalk in between your fingers. Yeah, And then you're going to hold the base of the pot. Yeah, And then you're going to go... Yeah. And you're going to slide that off. And some bits of muck may fall out the top. Just put a little sheet down. Or, well, your grow room will have a nice... A thick floor Root secure oh, on, floor on it, secure. so there won't be too much mess. And you will be able to look and evaluate your root system, mm. and you will be looking for a lovely white, fluffy root system. If you look at it and your roots are brown, black, yellowy, or any other colour apart from white and fluffy, you've got some issues in there. So then you can just slide your pop back on and go, okay. What, what was what was the purpose of that? They were fluffy and white. Nothing. Everything's great. They were looking a bit stinky. Oh yeah, make sure you have a smell and a feel. I always like to put my cheek and feel how you know what I'm like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to feel it and feel the how moisture. the moisture level and see it, it, how well the roots are dealing with the contents of moisture within the system. So that's what I've got to say about roots mm. and looking after them and keeping them healthy. Yeah. Oxygen, super important for roots. Oh, yeah, they love it. So plants taking oxygen, the leaf takes in CO2, don't get the two mixed up. Yeah. And good biological activity as well. Plants always do better with more biological activity. I, I'm going to, it's Eric's when point, and we're going to address it. horizontal, you need... More veg time. How is that more efficient? And he's correct, isn't he? Okay. Because we're That's... using more time. But we are on. We were talking about efficiency of capturing light, not efficiency of time. And we're talking time. about healthiness of plant. And yields. And time doesn't depict healthiness. You as a grower cultivator decides on how healthy your plant's going to be. Mm-hmm. So your calendar, just get it, throw it out the window. Told you one about that before. And because a lot of people are calendar growers, we're not. We're plant growers, sorry. So 
What uh, do you mean you're not finishing on the 15th of November? Because that, that was the 8th, 9th, 10th week. No, no, um, because sh- some issues do arise. So you may have, I may, I may have overwatered, may have underwatered uh, the efficiency problems, maybe I had an environmental problem or yeah. whatever. Then they address it. So then they had time on them mm, mm. because we've had to address that situation. Plan the development slowed down, stopped. So then we have to start the calendar again, the stop clock again. So that's why it's no good having a calendar, and that's why time isn't really an issue for us. No, it can be if it runs into you've been growing the same plan for twelve months yeah. and it's still not finished yeah. and it, it's still not looking very well. Obviously, but we're not saying about that. We're talking the difference between a a couple of weeks a very high yield in plants compared yeah. to a lower yield in plants yeah. so in terms of yield eric was right to pick up the points because in terms of efficiency of time scrogging is probably one of the least efficient time yeah uh, ways of growing a plant yeah so if we want to talk about time the most efficient method of sea of green yeah. sog sog yeah that that is the most efficient but that then is method. asking you to stress stress a plant out and make a plant do what it's not ready to do it's actually you, you c- commanding your plant to p- uh, flower before it's even pre-flowered before it showed you the sign saying yo i'm ready to flower yeah <laughs> So it's not even ready. You're stressing the little get out. Ooh, flower, bang. And it takes time to think, whoa, what's going on? This is, oh, I'm going to have to flower now and I need to do it right now. That's not what I'm into. It works and you can do it. It's a different schematic altogether. We're talking about healthiness of plants. That plants completely stress out as it is anyway and can never, ever grow to the potential that we could have our plants. Mm. Obviously, because you've wanted it, commanded it to change its life cycle before it's even ready to go into that cycle. Mm. So we've got to get a good balance between efficiency of capture and light, mm. efficiency of time, mm. and, and getting the best out of your plant's health, quality and yield. Well, as we believe, and we always try and help you, you can reduce your time by becoming more efficient. So all of the tips through the from maybe seedlings or any development of a small plant, clone, cut, whatever... We've went through all the stages stages of the environment, maybe what type of nutritional value and how what climate it should be in and how it's moved along. If you address all of those stages through the, each of the steering wheels, as Peter Clausen would say, your time will be reduced rapidly and your calendar could be actually spot on yeah. because that's what the plant wants. Mm. If you give it exactly what it wants, when it wants it and how it wants it, it will respond to that completely. Eric's being a devil's advocate today. Oh, great. He's, he's What's, he saying? What's he saying? What's he saying? What about auto flowers? Okay. So, sea of green wouldn't apply. I don't. I might be wrong. I'm not an auto, auto flower. Auto flowers are not something guy. I have any any. I don't like them. Experiencing. I don't neither. like auto flowers, and the reason why I don't I like auto flowers. So we're obviously talking about auto flowers in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got a lot of friends who cultivate in Canada and use auto flowers. So I'm going to talk about what I've been shared because I haven't got any personal experience with cultivating any auto flowers. So, but what I do know is auto flowers, they, do they produce seeds? <laughs> I would like to know the response to that, please, Eric. Because if they don't, that's a little bit confusing. Can you take clones from auto flowers? What light cycle do you give auto flowers? Because you can... They already just flower, flower when by ready. the... When they're ready. So is it... Give, a, if you gave I them 24 it, is hours, it, is it 18 hours, 18 hours, something hours, like that, something... How much darkness do you actually have to give them? Yeah, but it's not only about that. I believe um, certain companies within the seed industry, so I've heard, are trying to eradicate all other types of plants. And so basically you only are left with auto flowers. So they dominate the whole seed industry mm. which is a very strange concept i don't know if that's true let me know Eric, because yeah. i don't know whether i'm right or wrong Eric, just... you can buy auto flower seeds so yeah yeah should... do them do them seeds come from an auto flowering plant i don't know it's it, it's something i'm uneducated on i'm asking i'm asking yeah, to these yeah, guys because yeah, yeah. it's not something that we deal with a lot and eric said he's not an auto flower expert either it's not I don't like auto flowers because hopefully I'm someone's a... going to come on 
to the show and give us their full We expertise. want an auto flower expert yes, to please. come on and talk on the show. Yeah. And we'll give you the lowdown on it. Yeah. And that's what's great about live is we probably mm. wouldn't. Because to be honest with you, proper intrigues me. Mm. It, yeah, it, they it are, intrigues me They're well. interesting. They are interesting. And I spoke to a, a few people who grow them in Canada and the US and they rave on about it and it's unbelievable and blah, blah, blah. But then they were talking to me about certain companies are trying to dominate the seed yeah. industry and basically manipulate the, the, manipulate the plants genetically modifying them so that when you plant the seed I think, it, I think, it, I think flower, if I'm correct you can't take clones from a auto flower that's it so you can only get seeds mm-hmm. and you have to keep buying seeds so this then removes say me you sitting going oh yeah pal if we yeah. were growing and I wanted to give you that you can't you've got to go back to the store to buy this seed yeah. now Certain companies are pat- starting to patent these seeds. Mm. So then you sort of like bullied into having to buy this rather than... Sharing it. Yeah. Sharing and caring. Let me know if that's true because I don't know whether what I'm saying is 100% right. My problem with auto flowers, just dead quickly, is that, like you said before, when you're in the vegetative stage and there's a problem, if you're in the vegetative stage, you can sort it. Mm-hmm. No matter what the problem is and how bad it is, you can sort it out. Mm. With the auto flower, if there was a problem, the plant doesn't care. It's just going to turn itself into flower, yeah. and you've less opportunities then to correct. Or would that it mistake. stop? Does it stop and does give it you more its growth? Does it stop and give you more time to allow it to? Does it think, oh no, I'm not going to go into flower until I'm happy? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. What does it do? Let us know. There the, you go. Maybe another topic for future podcast. Mm-hmm. Okay. What time are we on now? We are on. 20 past one yeah trying to keep this one pretty uh, we've got a busy 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 schedule ahead of us um the third method um the last method oh no sorry the uh, the last method that i've written down for increasing yields is using products and additives such as pk 1314 yeah pk 918 which makes the flowering site swell and increase in size pks used some of them the majority of them such as 1314 and 918 you would get in PK 1314, middle to late flower. But as you know, I'm a big fan of Dutch Pro, so because he's explode, it doesn't have PK in it because I'm a lazy get sometimes, so don't need to do the PK rigmarole because it's got to do an explode. And we had that in week three and we we dosed it up slowly. There's also other products such as Flower Base, which has got a little bit of PK and Boron for early flower on site. That's week three of flower, that is, by Mm. the way, just Mm. in case. And then you've got other products as well for late flowering, adding. PK ratios, slightly different PK ratios for latent flower yeah. to harden everything up yeah. and increase the yields. They do work as well, don't they? There's no need for me to go and do research apart from how well they work. Yeah. PKs do work. They're not essential, but they can definitely help increase the, the yield. And that was that was it for yield. Have you do you do anything else for yields other than the explode and your PKs and whatever, making sure that obviously. Your plants are well strung up together and uh, there's no cracks on the stems and anything like that. Horizontal stalk growing, scrogging, maybe a bit of bending. Depending, bending for me will come when, if 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 there has been hor- horizontal plants growing and maybe there's a limitation on the light level, so plant might begin to grow into the danger zone, so I might need to bend it. Sting it up for a bit, let the knuckle grow, so the plant's still looking very mm. well. The plant's still happy, healthy. Question from Lee Harrington: What does boron do? Good question. What's uh, one for Steve? There you go. So boron is a micronutrient. It's not needed in high quantities or high amounts, such as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, NPK. Boron. I'm going to give you a full description. So when this podcast is finished, I'm going to give you the proper scientific of what boron does. But essentially, it's a micronutrient that will assist with the uptake of other nutrients that increase flowering sites. I believe it's a good stress reliever. So when the when you flick your plant, it's a good stress reliever. So when you are turning your plants from 18 hours of light to 12 hours of light, it's a stressful time for it. So boron is going to help with that. Less stress means the plant can then focus its energy less on recovery and more on flowering sites. And flower base does that really well. But I want to give you a better answer than that. So when the podcast finished, Lee, I'll write a proper description underneath your comment in a couple of hours or so. Oh, Lee. <laughs> oh, you're about to get an essay now, mate. You don't know what you've got yourself in for now. 
he might want that type of thing. Well, hopefully, yeah, I hope he does because he's getting it, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's getting it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, discussion time. Oh, yeah, okay. So, for people in the UK, you possibly find this part a little you bit You might boring. find it interesting, but you might find it's, it interesting. it's specifically. It's, for California, the US and California. Yeah. We're about to talk about Prop 64, Proposition 64. Proposition 64. Also called UMA, A-U-M-A, the Adult Use of Marijuana Act. Now, this is specific to California. Yeah. If you're interested in what goes on in California, then listen This up. is serious shit for you guys in Cali. Yeah, very yeah. serious. Essentially, it's an initiative that's going to legalise recreational cannabis in California and impose a 15%... Yay! Everybody tail. can run around smoking weed in California. Brilliant. Brilliant, amazing, excellent. Wow. I, I, I would love for that to happen in the UK because oh, I believe in the medicinal... Effects. Yeah, I so, do. I do believe in the medicinal effects. it's illegal in the UK. Yeah, it's illegal. Totally. Not allowed we to don't it. condone it. Not allowed to consume it, so but that's unfortunate for us. The quicker we move into California type... Legislation, the better. Yeah, yeah just better ruling. Colorado, we'll really. get all of these idiot politicians just link, just lynch them. Mid- cannabis has no medicinal effects. Oh, idiots. Anyway, anyway, so I've done a little bit of research, and what I'd like to say first and foremost is that we obviously we're based in the UK, and I don't want to sway anybody because we've got a lot of subscribers to the podcast in California, a good few thousand. Yeah. So we we'll shout out to you guys, and this is the reason that we're doing this discussion. Yeah. I don't want to influence you in any way. I just want to tell you all about what I've found, and, and we've just had a little UK nose, growers. a little nose, a little look into the and, situation. And Stephen has devised some good stuff and some, some bad. And that's what he look. That's what he writes. Look, he write, look. He's wrote good, <laughs> the good stuff. And the bad stuff. There you go. It's easy, isn't it? But we just want you to, you know, because we've got our ideas on it, and you know, obviously, you want to spark your own interest. Yeah. Go and do your own research. That's the most important. Has part. Heavy Tea been talking about this stuff? I haven't spotted anything from from Heavy Tea. Because this is coming up anyway. Chris. Yeah. But I imagine everybody that I've spoke to and, and seen, not including Eric, because we didn't get into. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to discuss this in depth. So, Eric, give your opinions here. Everybody that's on my Facebook. Uh, and it lives in America and, and California. Everybody's against it. Okay. Everybody's against it. And that's sort of, I thought, hmm, legalising recreational cannabis and everyone's against it. No one wants it. No one wants it. I need to no, look a little bit further into this. The good stuff. There's a researcher called New Frontier, and they are a cannabis researcher. They say it will bring $1 billion in tax and revenue, which doubles 2015 air sales from 2.76. Tax and revenue, don't tax. Mm. Tax, that way, doesn't sound good for any of us. For any, Well, for any of you guys. Unless that tax is being spent on schools and infrastructure and healthcare. But is it? Is that where this money's going to go? Go on, carry on. It legalises the possession, cultivation and sale of cannabis in California. Tax revenue would go to schools, like we've just said, and other places. Legalises home grows for everyone. So everyone can grow cannabis. Protects small farmers okay. who would do it outdoors. Okay. And creates no new crime. They, that's what Wikipedia would say. And, hmm. and the people were okay. in favour of Prop 64. Right, it sounds good. The bad stuff. The bad stuff. Regulators would be allowed to revoke state licences for farmers who harm the environment. For everyone on the podcast, I've just done that in inverted commas. Because they harm the environment by draining local creeks and using pesticides. Hang on a minute. Isn't that what every single farmer does around the globe anyway? To use our water resources to irrigate the plants if rainfall isn't sufficient. And every single farmer, unless you're growing organically, will be using pesticides because it's the, that's their living. If a pest destroyed the crop, whatever crop it is, they're out of business. So what are they saying then? So they could revoke state licences and the, the, the reasons is in case you harm the environment, we, we can revoke your state licence. But we Bas- are up for the environment though. We are. But yeah. they're basically that's saying to legislators, oh, if I think you're harming the environment, I'm going to take your licence off you. It gives them free reign to, re- to take anyone's licence okay. off Okay. Mm-hmm. That's how it's weirded. So get, to get a licence to operate legally could cost between $20,000 and $100,000. Oh, so you'd have to buy a licence. Mm. And that's a lot of money for a small, independent farmer. Mm. Who, who's got £100,000 to spend on a licence? Mm. Pharmaceutical companies. Uh, big corporations, such as Monsanto and Bayer. Mm. Big Scots. Mm. Just a thought. Mm. 
it would allow the state to make regular inspections on growers. Now, growers are referring to these as warrantless searches that could hinder business growth. A further tax of $9.25 per ounce of flowers sold and $2.75 per ounce of leaf matter sold. More taxes. Where do those taxes go? And lastly, the bad point is that in 2023, California could be selling Type 5 licenses to large businesses. And bigger businesses are better financed to pay for these licenses so we could see a decline in the small business sector. So the Type 5 license would be very expensive to get would probably push out the smaller farmers out of the uh, legal cannabis industry outdoors. Now, there's some counter-arguments as well for the good points that they talk about. The revenue generated in tax wouldn't go to schools, infrastructure and healthcare. It would go into a nice big pot, and the pot is controlled by the elite. So they decide where and who the money goes to. It legalises small number indoor grows, but makes it very difficult for outdoor grown crops because the licences cost so much essentially putting loads of legislation in front of the farmers and making it very expensive. The protection for small farmers is only for the next five years. So after five years, where big businesses can take stronghold of the market and wipe out the small farmers, Ooh. they can grow that much, they drop the price and make it small farmers and able to make a profit. And lastly, the counter-argument for creates new crime, it does because it's then going to make, uh, like for alcohol, in the US, anyone the under the, yeah, anyone under the age of twenty one. So people between the age of twen- eighteen and twenty one in college who would like to consume, they will. It will be illegal to do so. It will be illegal to share. It will be illegal to sell to your friends if you're under the age of twenty one. Interesting, isn't it? What's our opinion? My opinion is that it's great for establishing cannabis as the plant that it is, uh, less harmful than nearly all currently prescribed pharmaceutical drugs and recreational drugs such as alcohol but not good for the small businesses because they will be pushed out and essentially profits, it will turn into a profit game and they could turn cannabis into the tobacco industry. That being said, I said at the beginning, I don't want to influence any voters because it's not our laws, they're just our opinions. Hopefully what we've talked about will trigger you to then go, I didn't know that. I'm going to go and do some research mm-hmm. to form my own There's opinion. probably a load of other things that we don't really know about and it as well. that we haven't mentioned in yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. pros and cons. Yeah. To me, though, it's what's my opinion? My opinion is a bit of both. The good stuff, ooh, the legalising the cannabis, I think I don't think it should be illegal in any way because it's a plant and, you know, it, it, it's our planet and it's who gives us the right to tell us that we can and can't grow a planet for our own medicinal use or enjoyment, whatever mm. it may be. I don't believe in that. So the the, the, the legalisation is good, but then I'm reading in your other points where you're saying that then big corporate companies can start getting old and kicking out the, the small-time farmer who's using it, uh, uh, their benefits. And So I'm a bit... Uh, uh, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit It's a bit. If it didn't get legalised, I really feel sorry for... I don't think it's the best. It's the way mm. to go. What I think should happen is legalisation, but maybe through proposition. And one thing I do know is, to be honest, it doesn't re- really matter whether it is legal or it isn't because the Matrix company, the corporates, the they'll always have their find a way, find a way to have their little hand around the people's throat. Yeah. Always, they always do, and. Then there's always the black market, which the evolves and the criminal element from that. So the pros and cons of it, it just, it just makes it irrelevant, really, to me, to mm. be honest, because I just don't think that there is a, a proper medium between it all. No. And the re- lastly, the reason that we And the reason to being because there's so much money involved in yeah. it. Is that if this does go ahead in California, it has massive repercussions for everybody around the globe because California is a massive financial power. So hopefully that'll give you some insights as to. Mm. Go and do some more research. Eric said that the cost in Canada is upwards of eight million to become a licensed producer. Impossible for anybody who's not a pharmaceutical big agro big agro company. So the money goes to people who've got friends in high places. Yeah. That's nice. Standard. Moving on to quality. Two bullet points for quality. Go on. Before we finish up. A new method of lightening your plants via the plant diet or plant nutrition, as we talked about before, using a range of bulbs. And when I say range of bulbs, the range is depicted by the Kelvin temperature. So we go from 2,000 Kelvin, 4,000 Kelvin, 6,000 Kelvin, and 10,000 Kelvin. I'm going to mention Solastec because they're the ones that bring the light diet to the Mm. hydroponics industry. And with the light diet, you can dictate how the plant's going to grow. So specifically talking about quality, 
The, the Solistec 10,000K metal halide finishing bulb is very good because it produces a lot of UVB, which stresses out the plants, producing more oils and terpenes. And more oils and terpenes including, is a better quality and potency of flavour and aroma. Mm-hmm. But look into the 2,000, 4,000, 6,000K bulbs because you can really get a good feel. You can really manipulate your plants via the spe- different spectrums of light that you're given to it. And then the second point for quality, and again, I want everyone to comment and and how do you increase your yields, increase your yeah. quality, increase your health? Because these are just our opinions mm. and little tips of what we've got. You'll be a lot more. We've got one for five, six hours. Teach us some stuff. The last point that I've written down for quality is about your nutrition, your nu- your nutrient range. I shouldn't say nutrition, your nutrient range, your additives, because you can't you can't now go into a hydroponic shop and buy a bad nutrient, can you? Everything will work. Everything will grow your plants very well. But there's definitely... But you can just walk into your grow shop and it can be a bad grow shop or or you can be a bad grower. Mm. And there's definitely definitely a massive difference between cheap nutrients and expensive nutrients. But yeah, so don't try to stay away from cheap nutrients. They will work and you will have a pretty healthy plant. But quality, you want to get your better... You want to get your more expensive nutrients for your better quality plants. And having said that, not all expensive nutrients uh, will give you good quality. Not all cheap nutrients will give you bad quality. Mm. So just bear that in mind. Yeah. But typically, go for the better range of nutrients. And I know that nutrient manufacturers say, stick to our range of nutrients. And that's good if you're a first-time grower. Go for your canners. Go for your Dutch Pro. Go for your hard tops. Go for your whatever range that you want and stick to that range. If you're using Buddha's Tree, probably use canners A and B, hard tops A and B, Dutch Pro A and B. Use anyone's A and B and use their nutrient range. I personally like to mix and match. I like to use a base nutrient from that company, a PK and a sugar booster from that company, a root stimulator from that company, and that's my personal preference. I, I do like to mix and match, and they say, everywhere says that you shouldn't. I do. Do you? Yeah. And that's it. I found the quality is far better. Oh, yeah, that's my last point. Nutrients that have a blend of synthetic and organic is far better than just synthetic or just organic. And the nutrient range, the two nutrient ranges that I know that do that, are Botanicare and Hard Tops. Mm. But Botanicare nice... we're having problems with because it's no longer available in the UK and it's an unbelievable product yeah. range. So, so if anyone of influence is in uh, watching from Botanicare or from the US, help us get Botanicare back into yeah, the UK. Because we want it back on go. We especially that Rise Blast phenomenal root stimulator. Do that, is that. And that is that. Do you got anything to say about quality? With me, as always, quality to me is, is the key. I'm looking after your plant and, you know, I'm paying attention and adhering to the simple little things. It's not always about running to the grocery shop and spending some money. As you know, if people know me and come and see us in the store, you know, sometimes I won't even sell you the product. You will come in and you are trying to give us money and, and I won't take it because you're trying to mask the problem. And what we're always number one about it is actually addressing the issue that's causing you the problem rather than finding a resolution to just mask it over for a short period of time to get you to maybe the end of your cycle or whatnot. However, you'll be constantly changing, chasing your tail. Our MPK, we don't believe in that, so I'll, I'll continuously try and help you and school you and teach you the, the ways in which all plants live and breathe and develop and right across the board and if we don't know the answers because we don't know the answers to everything but we have a family who do and it, it's the MPK family and between the whole team between the whole lot of us we all have the answers and we can all do the research together so better together yeah well that's that that is that we'll probably do another one in the future with more tips and tricks on how to increase your quality health and yield of a plant hopefully you gained gleaned some good information from this podcast today to all of our listeners thank you for listening you've been with myself and if you don't know who i am by now you just haven't been paying attention so big thanks to everyone who's been persevering with this because we've been robbing on for a bit now thank you for listening